All right. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, this is Chapter 7, um, and it's an integrity recording for uh, Week uh, 9. And chapter 7 deals with understanding theory and research frameworks. The learning objectives are uh, defined theory and the elements of theory, uh, concepts, relational statements, and propositions. Distinguish between the levels of uh, theoretical thinking. Describe the use of middle range uh, theories as frameworks for studies. Describe the purpose of a study framework. Uh, identify study frameworks developed uh, from nursing theories and critically appraise the frameworks in published studies. So there are many terms, uh, some of them, almost all of them, I have um, prepared a, a slide for. So here is one. Uh, you need to know what a concept is. So a concept is a term that um, describes and names an object in an abstract way. Uh, it abstractly describes and names an idea, an experience, a phenomenon. Now in terms of research, a concept is defined in a specific way to present the ideas relevant to a theory. So a researcher will define the concepts that are used uh, in his or her study. Another uh, term is variable. Uh, variable is um, more specific than a concept, and um, it varies. That is, it changes, and it is measurable. Construct. Okay, Construct is different from concept. Um, it's a broader category of an idea, and it may encompass several uh, concepts. So uh, an example of a concept, um, very, very basic example, uh, would be the idea of a chair, chair, C-H-A-I-R. So when, when, when we use the term chair, uh, everyone knows that it is uh, a piece of perhaps the uh, household furniture. It has uh, four legs, it has a seat, it has a back. Okay, so the concept of chair is shared um, universally. People know what you mean when you say chair. Same thing for bird, right? Or the concept of color, uh, red, for example. Okay. Now, a construct uh, is a broader idea, uh, and it may encompass several concepts. So uh, examples of a construct would be a social support, um, One of the subconcepts would be uh, resources and network. Other constructs that come from uh, psychology are anxiety, uh, fear, um, personality uh, characteristics such as self-esteem and motivation. So a concept is broader. Um, than a concept, but smaller than a theory. All right, an assumption uh, is uh, uh, our statements in a philosophy or a theory or a research study that are taken for granted and considered to be true. So here is a diagram that links the uh, elements of construct, concept, and variable. So. At the very um, basic level here, at a concrete level, we have the variable. So perceived family social support, okay? Uh, this is a variable um, that belongs to social support concept, okay? You can see we're starting to go up into more abstract levels of thinking. and. Um, as we go farther up, we have construct, and construct 
takes into account um, resources and um, social support. Okay, so you can see that you're going from a concrete level up to a more abstract level. Other terms that I'd like you to know, philosophy. This is a rational, intellectual exploration of truth or principles uh, and describe viewpoints on what reality is and which ethical ideas should guide practice. A theory is a set of concepts that present a view of a phenomena. And a model is a diagram or a map that graphically displays concepts and relationships in a theory. Okay, so keep um, keep these terms, these uh, one, two, three, four, seven terms in um, keep them in mind as we go through the uh, integrity presentation. Other research terms uh, in this chapter are grand nursing theory middle range theory and practice theory, and we will go through these. Um, but at the uh, highest level of, um, of thinking is the grand nursing theory. Uh, this is uh, defined as abstract elevated level of thinking that attempts to explain all of nursing. Middle range theory is less abstract theory. It's more specific. Uh, it's on a more specific level of thinking, suggesting specific approaches to a practice problem. Practice theory is a subcategory under um, middle range theory. Practice theory is very prescriptive. It directs nursing interventions, uh, and research in practice theory. Uh, can lead to evidence-based practice. Okay, uh, this is an example of Roy uh, one model uh, of the Roy adaptation model. Uh, the Roy adaptation model is an example of a grand nursing theory. So here you have uh, adaptation on the outer level, right, and the, this is. This, the gray part um, represents uh, the individual, and the individual has four modes, a physiologic mode, physical mode, a self-concept group identity, um, a role function mode, and an interdependence mode. And at the heart of all of these four modes uh, are coping processes. So the individual uh, exists in the environment and is influenced by stimuli coming in all the time, right? And these place demands on the physical, the self-concept, role function, and interdependence modes. And as a result of the coping, right, uh, the behavior is um, adaptive, um, compensatory, or non-compensatory. And there's a role for nursing to support the coping processes uh, of the individual in these four modes. So this picture says uh, a lot um, about how Roy uh, views the human adaptive system and the role of nursing. Okay, other terms. Uh, a framework. A framework is an abstract a logical structure of meaning, such as a portion of a theory, the framework uh, will guide the development of the study, the framework is tested in the study, and the framework enables the researcher to link study findings back to the body of nursing knowledge. I've provided you with two definitions, a conceptual definition and operational definition. We talked about this uh, in a previous uh, class, um, but briefly, the conceptual definition refers uh, to 
uh, that that prov which provides the general meaning of a variable. The operational definition is a definition that indicates how the researcher will measure or count the variables. Someone who is uh, developing, developing a proposal for research will include a conceptual definition and an operational definition of the variables. And uh, you know that the hypothesis is a statement about the specific relationships uh, among the variables. Uh, this is a graphic model of the framework and this framework has to do with symptoms in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma patients. So here we have physiologic factors, psychologic factors, situational factors, and other characteristics. All of these uh, produce multiple symptoms and influence functional support. So someone might use this uh, in a research study uh, where they are trying to promote the functional support uh, of individuals with COPD and asthma patients. So in addition to having text, you know, typed words that explains the framework, there's also a model that can um, provide a picture uh, of the key variables um, and the dependent variables. All right, what is a theory? Uh, so a theory is a set of statements intended to explain a process or phenomena. Uh, statements in a theory include both concepts and the connections that explain the phenomena, and the connections are the relationships among the variables. Uh, a theory uh, contains ideas and knowledge of science. Uh, research is based on theory. Theory is the initial inspiration for a research study. And um, research helps answer the question, uh, was my theory correct? Was my theory supported uh, by the findings of the study? So uh, here is an important question. Uh, what is the difference between frameworks uh, and theories? So a framework is a brief explanation of a theory or portions of a theory to be tested in a study. It may be implicit in a study or explicitly stated. A framework uh, is uh, an abstract logical structure of meaning, such as a portion of a theory that guides the development uh, of the study, is tested in the study, and enables the researcher to link the findings to the body of nursing knowledge. The framework uh, must, be include, must include the concepts and definitions. The relational statements must be clear and represent uh, and be represented graphically by a model. So keep this in mind when you are critically appraising a framework in a study. Oh, excuse me. Did we? Yes, I skipped this. Theories. Um, theories are sets of concepts that present a view of a phenomenon. Theory is abstract rather than concrete and it focuses on the general. So why are conceptual models important? Okay, this term, conceptual model, okay, uh, your book makes a point of um, how various um, authors uh, use the term conceptual model. Uh, in, in your textbook, the author reserves uh, the term conceptual model. Um, she replaces it with grand nursing theory. Okay, So uh, 
if you see conceptual model uh, somewhere, uh, they're often talking about grand nursing theory as opposed to that graphic model that we just talked about. So uh, a conceptual model, grand nursing theory, is a very abstract, elevated level of thinking. And a key point, it attempts to explain all of nursing. Examples of grand nursing theory. Well, we talked about the Roy adaptation model. Uh, and from other theory courses, uh, you are familiar with Orem self-care theory of nursing, right? Um, the role of nursing is to promote self-care to the uh, extent that the client um, has uh, the ability to provide self-care themselves or they have self-care deficits and then the role of nursing is to supply what the patient needs. Uh, Watson has a theory of caring and uh, the Betty Newman systems model. So uh, the grand nursing theory conceptual model explains a phenomena of interest and reflect a philosophical stance. Cannot be tested via research, but they may guide uh, qualitative studies. And if you go back to the grand nursing theory, the original publications, you will find many operational definitions uh, just, uh, found uh, in the models uh, themselves. So what sources are commonly used for conceptual definitions? As I just said, the existing theoretical works of the um, grand nursing theorists. Uh, they must be used if the propositions from the theory are being tested, the original work. Uh, it's always desirable uh, when it's available and uh, should be directly quoted and cited. Uh, another way uh, to identify uh, conceptual definitions is to look at concept analyses. <clears throat> and these would be um, published in um, nursing journals that focus on theory development. Other sources. Uh, include uh, previous studies uh, using uh, the concept, uh, publications describing instrument development, general literature, and uh, performing a concept analysis yourself. Here's a question for you. What does a study framework reflect? Does it reflect a, a blueprint for the study? Does it uh, develop, uh, I'm sorry, uh, does it reflect a data analysis strategy? Does it reflect the researcher's theory or idea about the study? Is it a specific plan for data collection? So um, it's The, the researcher has a theory about the study outcomes, uh, what they'll be and why. And as a researcher develops a plan for conducting a study, the theory on which the study is based is expressed as the study framework. Okay. So the answer is C. What are the elements of theory? Uh, these are the four elements. Concepts, conceptual definition, relational statements, and a uh, map, conceptual map. So concepts, uh, we said before, they abstractly describe and name an object, idea, or phenomenon, thus providing it with a separate identity or meaning. Conceptual definition is more comprehensive than a dictionary definition. It includes associated meanings that a word may have. A uh, relational statement clarifies the type of relationship that exists between or among the concepts. And the map or the model graphically shows the interrelationships of the concepts and the relational statements.
So we've talked about theory, we've talked about grand nursing theory, and now we'll talk about middle range theories. So the middle range theories are not quite as um, abstract, uh, sophisticated, uh, as the grand nursing theory. Okay, um, They're narrower in scope than conceptual models, or grand nursing theory. They attempt to explain parts of nursing, not all of nursing. They're more concrete and specific. Middle range theories can be used as a broad framework for applied and basic nursing research. They emerge from a review of studies to build evidence-based practice related to a clinical problem. Which of the following is true about theoretical frameworks used in research? Which of the following is true about theoretical frameworks used in research? Theories are constructed by people and are tentative in nature. Theories offer precise guidance in all situations. Theories represent ultimate truth. Theories are congruent with reality. Okay. So theories are developed in nursing to explain phenomena important to clinical practice. They must be tested through research to determine their correctness. So the correct answer is A. How do nurses utilize practice and intervention theories? Oh, I'd like I want to go back here. Uh, let's see. Examples of middle range theories. Um, you may have heard of the health promotion theory uh, by Pender. Um, you may have uh, heard of the comfort care theory by Kolkaba. And there is another one listed in your textbook, and it's called resilience theory. And this was developed by Laura Polk. And Laura Polk was a former faculty member here at Howard University College of Nursing. Her specialty was in pediatrics. And in pediatrics, uh, because of the population, uh, young children, uh, with their uh, patterns of growth and development, with their unique biology, um, they are very resilient uh, to attempts to improve their health. So Laura Polk, the author of the Resilience Theory. How do nurses utilize practice and intervention theories? Uh, so uh, the term practice theory is called prescriptive theory, right? Uh, it's also called situation specific. Um, these theories direct nursing interventions. Practice theory research develops into evidence-based practice. Also, you should know that practice guidelines are good uh, sources for practice and prescriptive theories. Uh, your textbook talks about the author Brenneman. Uh, Brenneman uh, developed a practice theory um, called the Theory for Individuals with Severe Persistent Mental Illness. She was an emergency room nurse who saw a repeat uh, patients uh, repeatedly returning to the emergency room and staff uh, needing some guidance into how to manage uh, individuals with severe persistent mental illness. Sounds like it was very uh, helpful, very needed uh, in that situation. What are frameworks? So uh, frameworks explain the theory, they give the relationships of the variables, and uh, the result, this results in the hypotheses which are testable. Researchers often include a model that serves as a conceptual map, and the map or the model displays essential concepts in framework 
uh, and relationships among the concepts. What frameworks might be used for physiologic studies? Well, a framework um, might come from um, the literature uh, from physics, from, from these disciplines, physics, physiology, even pathophysiology. Theoretical relationships may be considered uh, facts rather than theories, and propositions can be developed and tested using these laws and principles. What frameworks are used in middle range theory? Remember, they are limited in scope. They have a particular focus. The example is resilience theory by Polk. Uh, they contain a limited number of concepts. They do not attempt to uh, explain all of nursing. The focus is on a limited aspect of a relationship. It's sufficiently general to be interesting, it's empirically testable, and it's consolidated into a wide range of theories. I think you can see from this that the range of the middle range theories is uh, narrow, limited in scope. What frameworks are derived from qualitative studies? Uh, middle range theories are developed in some qualitative studies as outcomes of the study. So the study is done, uh, and then uh, the theory, the middle range theory, is developed from the findings of the study. So an example um, of frameworks derived from grounded theory Remember, grounded theory uh, is theory that has its roots in the data derived uh, from the study. So examples would be uh, coping, uh, a middle range theory that's derived from the data found from um, a study that looks at the coping behaviors uh, of uh, survivors of breast cancer, or sorrow. Uh, in the lives of patients with multiple sclerosis. Okay, So these become the basis for clinical practice and or framework uh, for other qualitative or quantitative studies. Frameworks de derived from grounded theory are uh, coping in advanced cancer and uh, sorrow in multiple sclerosis. What frameworks are included in conceptual nursing models? Remember, conceptual nursing models, you're talking about the grand nursing theory, trying to explain all of nursing. So a few conceptual models come from a research tradition. So the theorist, for example, Roy, um, is a nurse um, interested in research, interested in pediatrics, and interested in uh, neuro, neuroscience. Uh, but her model really didn't come out of a research tradition. She developed her model. And from that model, others use that model uh, to develop frameworks that they use in their own study. And this is a way of testing conceptual models in nursing. Uh, what are some problems with frameworks that you may find in research studies? Uh, it's possible that uh, the researcher has used an inappropriate framework, disconnected framework, multiple frameworks, or an unidentified framework. So I'm going to refer you to your textbook, page 199, uh, and that has a listing of a guide, a guidelines uh, for critical appraisal when you're reviewing a research study, uh, a research study framework. Which of the following is an example of a theory from a physiologic background that is used as nurses uh, as a framework for nursing studies? 
gait control theory of pain, health promotion model, social cognitive theory, theory of coping. What do you think? Physiologic background. Okay, A is the best answer, gait control theory of pain. Um, your job uh, in your critiques is to um, critically appraise a study framework. That's, that's one portion of the critical appraisal. So uh, see your textbook for the guidelines. Um, the, but uh, here's a capsule. Uh, concepts are linked with variables that are measured okay, in the framework. The author uh, uses concepts that are represented in the hypotheses, in the research questions, and or the objectives. Okay. Uh, determine whether the hypotheses, research questions, or objectives are tested statistically. Hypotheses, research questions, or objectives emerge from the framework propositions. Look for comments connecting uh, findings to specific elements of the framework. Search for comments discussing the implications of the findings in terms of truth or falsity of the framework propositions. So, are, as you're reading your studies, are you saying yes, there are comments connecting findings to specific elements of the framework, or no, they're missing? Same thing for the implications of the findings. Are they discussed in terms of the truth or falsity of the framework propositions? Uh, other questions uh, to ask when you're critically appraising a study's framework are the findings for each hypothesis, question, or objective consistent with those proposed by the framework. If the findings are not consistent with the framework, was the methodology adequate to test the hypothesis, question, uh, or objective? And finally, are the findings consistent with those of other studies using the same framework or testing the same propositions. So you see you'd really need to know the literature to do that. Okay, I want to go back to the objectives for this lesson. Okay, so after you're uh, reading uh, chapter 7 uh, in understanding theory and research frameworks, you should be able to define theory and the elements of theory Distinguish between levels of theoretical thinking. Uh, describe the use of middle range theories as frameworks for studies. Describe the purpose of a study framework. Identify study frameworks developed from nursing theories. And critically appraise the frameworks in published studies. Okay, so that is it for the integrity today. Uh, if you have questions, please contact me. Uh, through email, or um, you may call me at the number that I've listed uh, during office hours. And actually, you can call at other times too if needed. I may not be here to get your mess uh, get your call, but if you leave a message, I will call you back. All right. So thank you, and have a nice evening.